season replays, fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if tournaments. It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach, DKM. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK with Coffee Cup Games. Hope you guys are having a good one. As you know, we are doing a March Madness tournament here at Coffee Cup Games, and these games have been absolutely incredible. In this tournament of the 68 Greatest World Series Champions, we are in the Birch Bracket, where we're going to have our first game between two teams from the same franchise. And in this game, it's going to be the number 8 and a number 9 seed, both teams being from the Yankees. The number 8 seeded team, who's going to be the home team, is the 1941 Yankees, who went 101 wins with 53 losses. And they're going to be hosting the 1923 New York Yankees, who won 98 games and lost 54. The 1923 New York Yankees are legendary for many reasons. First of all, it was the year that they moved into Yankee Stadium, the stadium that Ruth built. In the opening game, Babe Ruth hit a home run to christen the new stadium as he led his team to a 4-1 victory. Babe Ruth had the highest batting average ever for a Yankee when he hit 393. Ironically, Harry Heelman of the Detroit Tigers had a higher average hitting 403. In 1923, the Yankees won their very first World Series in franchise history as they made up for two losses that they had in 1921 and 1922 against the New York Giants in the Fall Classic. The 1923 Yankees won the World Series in six games. The 1941 Yankees won their World Series in five games over the Brooklyn Dodgers. The 41 Yankees were extremely popular. They had books, songs, and poems written by them, including the big band hit Jolton Joe DiMaggio, which became a popular song throughout the country. Part of the reason for his popularity was because Joe DiMaggio had a hit streak of 56 games during the season. So which star is going to lead their team to victory? Will it be Babe Ruth leading his 1923 Yankees or will it be Jolton Joe DiMaggio leading his 1941 Yankees? So let's go ahead and let's check out the starting lineups between the Yankees and the Yankees. For the 1923 New York Yankees, they're going to have Witt, the center fielder, leading them off. Jim Dugan is going to be at third base. He's batting second. Babe Ruth, the right fielder, is batting third. Bob Musel, the left fielder, is going to be batting fourth. Wally Pipp, the first baseman, this is pre-Lou Gehrig years, is going to be at first base. He's going to be batting fifth. Ward, the second baseman, is batting sixth. Wally Shang, the catcher, is going to be batting seventh. And Scott, the shortstop, is going to be batting eighth. And on the mound is going to be Wadey Hoyt. For the 1941 Yankees, they're going to have Strum, the first baseman, leading them off. Roy, if the third baseman, is going to be batting second. Heinrich is going to be in right field. He's batting third. Joe DiMaggio is going to be in center field. He's batting fourth. Charlie Keller will be in left field. He's batting fifth. Bill Dickey, the catcher, is going to be batting sixth. Joe Gordon, the second baseman, is batting seventh. Phil Rizzuto, the shortstop, is batting eighth. And on the mound is going to be Marius Russo. So there's the lineups. I decided I'm going to be managing the 1923 New York Yankees as I thought it would be fun to be able to manage Babe Ruth and manage the Yankees team that won its very first World Series. So we got the lineups. Now let's jump into the action between the 1923 New York Yankees and the 1941 New York Yankees. <laughs> Here we are at Yankee Stadium between the 23 Yankees and the 41 Yankees. Russo is going to be the starting pitcher for the 41 Yankees. Maybe a bit of a surprise. The Yankees did have Red Ruffing as well as Lefty Gomez. Russo and Gomez started the most amount of games. Russo had a much better whip in ERA compared to Gomez. So I decided to go with Russo as the best pitcher on the team for this tournament. And the left-hander is going to be going against Witt, the center fielder, who had 314 with six home runs. And he's going to lead off the game with a single. So he's on base right off the bat. Now Dugan's up. He had 283 with seven home runs. He's going to draw a walk. So we have two guys on base right off the bat. And now here comes the legend himself, Babe Ruth, who had 393 with 41 home runs back in 1923. The second highest on his team had only 10 home runs, which tells you how dominant Babe Ruth actually was back in 1923. So what is he going to do in this game? The first time we get to see Babe Ruth, and he's going to be strikeout. 
a 5-5 on the pitcher's card. So that'll be one down, and now Musel's up, and he's going to hit a fly ball to Joe DiMaggio. He has a range of one, and he has to get there, and he will. So that's going to be two down, and now Wally Pip is up, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Phil Rizzuto, who has to make a play, and he will as he gets the force out at second. And that's going to go ahead and end the game after we get two guys on early and get to the heart of our lineup. Russo comes through in the clutch. So bottom of the first, Wadey Hoyt, the right-hander, is on the mound going against Sturm, the first baseman who had only 239. He's got a fly ball to left field to Musel. That's going to be one down. And now Roy, the third baseman's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Ward. That's going to be two down. And now Henrich, the right fielder, is up. He had 31 home runs. He's going to hit this one to Babe Ruth, who has to make a play. And Babe Ruth does make a play. So both Joe DiMaggio and Babe Ruth have to make a play in their respective defensive innings, and they both do, showing why they are some of the greatest players of all time. Top of the second, Ward, the second baseman, is going to be leading us off. He was second in the team in home runs with 10. He's going to get a ground ball back to Russo, who has to make a play. And Russo makes an incredible play, throws it the first. That's one down, and now Hoffman's up. Hoffman's going to hit a simple fly ball to DiMaggio. This is going to be routine out, so that's two down. And now Scott is up the shortstop. He's going to hit a line ball right at Strom for the third out, a quick one, two, three inning. As we go into the bottom of the second with DiMaggio coming up to bat, he had 357 with 30 home runs. He's going to hit a ground ball to short. The best roll on the hitter's card for us was that column two, which we got. We got a 2-7, so that's going to be one down. And now Charlie Keller is up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Scott, who has a range of one, has to make a play. He will. So that's going to be two down, and now Dickey's up, and he's going to hit a pop-up to the opposite side of the infield. Dugan slides over, calls everybody off, and he pulls that one in for the third out. So that's going to take us to the top of the third. Russo going against his opposing pitcher, Wadey Hoyt, and Hoyt is going to be strikeout. Second strikeout for Russo, and he goes now against Witt, who got on base with a single in his first at bat. He's going to hit a ground ball to Royf. Royf picks this one up, throws to the first. That's going to be two down, and now Dugan is up, and he needs a one to five for a hit. It's going to be a 20, so that's going to be the third out, a quick one, two, three inning. And now we go in the bottom of the third with Wadey Hoyt on the mound. Has not allowed a runner on base yet. And he's going to be going against Joe Gordon, the second baseman, at 24 home runs. He's going to hit a ground ball to Wally Pipp at first, who picks it up, throws it to Wadey Hoyt, who's covering. That's one down. And now Phil Rizzuto's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Pipp again. Pipp picks it up, throws it to Wadey Hoyt, and that's going to be two down. And now the pitcher Russo is up, and he's going to pop this one up to Dugan. So after three innings, Wadey Hoyt has not allowed a runner on base, and we're going to go into the top of the fourth. The score nodded at nil to nil. The 23 Yankees have one hit, have not come in the air. The 41 Yankees have not gotten a run, a hit. They have not come in the air, and they have not gotten anybody on base. Top of the fourth, we got the heart of our lineup coming up. Babe Ruth, who struck out in the first inning, is up to bat, and he is going to hit a little dribbler in front of home plate. Dickey has to get there. It might as well have just been a bunt, but Ruth ends up with a single. And so we'll take it, but now he's on first, and Musel is up to bat, and he is going to hit a shot in the center field. It's going to be over DiMaggio, bounces off the wall. DiMaggio picks it up. We have a chance to send Babe Ruth. He has a 50% chance. DiMaggio has a minus four arm. So we are going to keep Babe Ruth at third base because we have zero outs, and that's going to put two runners in scoring position, and we got Wally Pip coming up. He hit 304, so I feel good about our chances here, even though he did get out earlier. He's going to ground ball to Rizzuto. They had the infield in, so nobody's able to advance, and that's going to be one down. And now Ward is up. He's 0 for 1. He's going to hit a ground ball to Gordon at second. And because the infield was still in, we're not able to get anyone to score. So two down now, and now Hoffman's up the catcher with 264, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Gordon. Bruh. After getting Ruth on base with a fluke single, and then the double that put two runners on scoring position, we hit three ground balls to create three outs, and we are not able to score a run. So we're going to go into the bottom of the fourth, still with a score knotted at nil to nil. Here is Strum, the leadoff man. He's going to hit a pop up to Ward. That's going to be one down. And now Royf is up. He grounded out earlier. He's going to ground out again to Ward. 
And the Ward's going to pick this one up, throw it to Pip. That's two down. And now Henrich is up. And Henrich is going to hit a fly ball opposite field to Musel, who barely has to move. And so that's going to be a quick one, two, three inning again as the 41 Yankees cannot get anybody on base. Top of the fifth, shortstop Scott is up. He had 246 with six home runs. He's going to lift this one and pull it into left field to Charlie Keller. That's going to be one down. And now Wadey Hoyt is up. And that's going to be a strikeout. Russo with his third strikeout, and now Witt is up, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Royf, who's going to pick this one up, throw it over to first, and that's going to end the inning as we go into the bottom of the fifth. Joe DiMaggio going to lead them off as they got the heart of their lineup. They got DiMaggio with his 30 home runs, Keller with his 33 home runs, and then Dickey, who only had seven, but did hit 284. And then they're followed, if it happens, with Gordon, who had 24 home runs. A good part of their lineup here coming up. And DiMaggio is going to hit a ground ball over to Dugan. That's going to be one down. And now Charlie Keller's up, and he's going to be strikeout. The first strikeout for Wadey Hoyt. And now Dickey is up. And Dickey needs a 1-2. to two. First chance that they have for a hit. And it's going to be a 9, so it will be a line out. So Wadey Hoyt continues to have a no-hit perfect game after five innings. Every two counts and a Rick Flair. Top of the six, here's Dugan, 0 for 1. He's going to hit a line ball right at Roy. That's going to be one down. And now here is Babe Ruth, the great Bambino. He's 1 for 2, and he is going to be strikeout. As that was a 4-7 on the pitcher's card. So Russo has been able to keep Babe Ruth in check. And now Bob Musel's up. He's 1 for 2. He had that double. He's going to get his second hit of the game. It's going to be a single. And now Wally Pip is up. He's 0 for 2. And he's going to be strikeout to end the inning. So we go into the bottom of the six with a bunch of goose eggs on the scoreboard. And now here's Joe Gordon that hit 276. And he's a 1 to 13. It's going to be a 6. So the first hit that Wadey Hoyt gives up is a 4-2, a roll on the pitcher's card. A 1-14 would have been a home run. He rolled a 6 on the 20 die. So the perfect game, no hitter, is blown on a solo shot by Joe Gordon, the Hall of Fame second baseman. And that gives the 41 Yankees a 1-0 lead. And now Phil Rosuto is up, and he's going to hit a fly ball to Witt, who has to make a play. He has a range of three. He will get there, so that's going to be one down. And now Russo, the pitcher, is up. He needs a 1-5, to five, and it's going to be a 5, a roll on the pitcher's card again. So that's going to be their second hit. And now Sturm is up, and he needs a 1-2. to two. It's going to be a 17, so that'll be a line out the ward at second. That's two down. And now Royf is up, and he's going to hit a ground ball over to Pip. Picks this one up and tags the base himself, and that's going to end the inning. But the 41 Yankees jump up 1-0 on Gordon's home run to lead off the six. So after six innings, the 23 Yankees have zero runs, have four hits, have not come in the air. The 41 Yankees have one run on two hits and have not come in the air yet either. I hope you guys are enjoying this matchup between two Yankees teams. If you're this far along in the video, I hope that you've hit the thumbs up and like the video. If you haven't, please go ahead and do that. I'd also appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. And lastly, leave any questions, comments, and snide remarks in the comment section down below. So now let's jump back into the action between the Yankees versus the Yankees. Top of the seventh here is Ward, the second baseman leading us off. Russo on the mound. He's going to get Ward hit a fly ball to Henrich, who has to make a play. He has a range of one, and Henrich makes the play, so that's one down. And now Hoffman's going to hit a ground ball to Gordon. That's going to be two down, and now Scott is up. He's 0 for 2. But he's going to get a two-out single, so he's on base. And now Wadey Hoyt, the pitcher's up the bat. He needs a one to five. It's going to be a seven, so that'll end up being an out to the shortstop. Rizzuto takes care of that one, and that's going to end the inning as we go into the bottom of the seventh with the heart of their lineup, Henrich, DiMaggio, and Keller coming up the bat, each with over 30 home runs. And Henrich is going to hit a fly ball to Musel. That's one down. And now Joe DiMaggio's up, and he's going to hit a ground ball to pip at first. So that's two down, and now Keller's up, and Keller's going to draw a walk, the first walk by Wadey Hoyt, and now Dickey is up. Dickey needs a 1-12 to 12 on the pitcher's card. It's going to be an 18, so that will end up being a flyout to end the inning. 
And the 41 Yankees with a 1-0 lead going to the 8th inning decide to make a defensive change. They are going to put Crescetti at 3rd base, and he will bat 2nd. And we go in the top of the 8th with Witt leading us off. He's the top of the order. He had 314, 6 home runs. He's 1 for 3 today. He's going to draw a walk. So he gets on base. Russo, the left-hander, has a minus one arm. Dickey has a minus four arm. Look at that defensive hard right there. A range of one, an air of one, and a minus four arm. Impressive. But here's Dugan. He's 0 for 2. He got on base with a walk. And he's a 1 to 7 for a double. This one's going over Dimaggio. It's going to bounce off the wall. But Dimaggio with his incredible arm and wit not being that fast has a 45% chance to score. I really want to take the risk, but it's just not the smart move. So I'm going to hold all the runners. I like those odds. So again, we got runners on second and third with no outs. And we got Babe Ruth coming up to bat with a chance to be a hero. And he's going to draw a walk. So a walk on the batter's card. That was a 3-9 Definitely wanted on the batter's card. Unfortunately, it was a walk, so he's not going to get the hit that we desperately needed. But it is going to bring up Musel, who is two for three with a double. And so here's the pitch, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Crescetti, who's going to throw it home, get the out at home, who's going to then throw it to first. So they get a 5-2-3 double play. Such an idiot. And so that's going to be two down, and we got... Dugan now on third, Ruth on second, and Pip is up. He hit 354, so definitely can get some hits. He does well in the clutch. He's over three, unfortunately, today. We need a column one or a column three, and they are going to intentionally walk him. And now they're going to go against Ward, the second baseman, who hit 284 with 10 home runs. Bases are loaded, two down, top of the eighth. Russo grinded in, and it's going to be a foul ball behind home plate. Dickey pulls this one in, and again, the 41 Yankees get out of a jam with runners on second and third with no outs. Gordon is going to be leading off the inning. The seventh batter in the lineup had that solo shot in his last at bat. It is the only run that either team has scored and only one of two hits that Whitty Hoyt has given up. Gordon needs a one to four for a triple. It's going to be a 10. So that'll be a fly out the wit. That's one down. Now Phil Rizzuto's up. He's going to go opposite field, hit a fly ball right at Ruth. That's two down. And now Marius Russo is up the bat. He's the other player with a hit as he got lucky and got on the pitcher's card and had a 1-5 to five and rolled the 5. So he has the second hit for the team. He is going to this time hit a fly ball to Musel into left field, and that's going to end the inning. We're going to go into the top of the ninth with a 1-0 to nil score. We are possibly facing our last at bat. Even though Wadey Hoyt has only given up two hits in this game. Hoffman's going to be leading us up. He's 0 for 3. I'm going to definitely let him hit. But Russo with a strikeout on the batter's card. So that's going to be one down. We got Scott coming up. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to bring in a pinch hitter as he only hit 246. And we need to try to see what we can do to generate any kind of offense in this last possible at bat. And we are bringing up Wally Shang, our backup catcher. He had 276. The switch hitting catcher is going to be going against Russo with one down. Russo still has plenty of room as he's only allowed six hits so far. And Shang is going to draw a walk. So he is on base, and now we're going to have Wadey Hoy coming up the bat. So obviously, we want to bring in another pinch hitter. So we're going to bring in the rookie, Lou Gehrig. He had only 26 at bats, but he did have four doubles, a triple, and a home run as he hit 423. Can the future star of the Yankees come through in the top of the ninth with a runner on first and one down? And he's going to be strikeout. 
Russo with his seventh strikeout in the game, and that's going to take us to Witt, our leadoff hitter. The center fielder is one for three. He's been on base twice, two down. Shang on first. Here's the pitch, and it's going to be a strikeout. As Russo shuts down the 23 Yankees to win this one in our first shutout of the tournament. The 41 Yankees win this one 1-0 one even though Wadey Hoyt only gave up two hits. That game was heart-wrenching. Wadey Hoyt from the 23 Yankees pitched brilliantly. He only allowed two hits. He only walked one batter. And his team didn't make any errors behind him. But unfortunately, one of those hits was a solo home run by Joe Gordon as he blasted one into the left field stands. Marius Russo didn't pitch bad for the 41 Yankees. He did pitch a complete game shutout and definitely did his job not allowing Babe Ruth to hit anything of any power. So that's going to end this game. The 23 Yankees, who I was managing, lost and will be eliminated. The 41 Yankees will advance and will be taking on the number one seed, the 1907 Chicago Cubs. It was our first shutout so far in the tournament. We've had a lot of great games. Again, we had a game that was within a run. I hope you guys are enjoying all these games so far. Until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one. Bye.